the Gripen has always suffered a lot of criticism due to its combat radius. The Model C, in the 2008 Swiss competition, performed poorly in the general evaluation mainly due to its low autonomy, which created two problems. The first was the short operational range, and the second, as a consequence of the first, was the need to carry many external tanks that ended reducing space for bombs and missiles. Aiming to solve this deficiency, Gripen E, which emerged as a brutal evolution of Gripen C, received a lot of focus on increasing autonomy. To this end, Saab carried out a major structural change with the repositioning of the rear landing gear, which increased the internal fuel space from 2,300 kg in the Gripen C to 3,400 kg in the Gripen E. For comparison purposes, AF-16 transport 3,200 kilos of internal fuel, that is, 200 kilos less than the Gripen E. Furthermore, the F-16 is larger, which generates more aerodynamic drag, and is also heavier, which requires more power to fly and consequently increases the fuel consumption. Still, autonomy is not a problem for the F-16, and much less will be for the Gripen E, which carries more internal fuel, is smaller and lighter. However, structural change was not the only solution adopted to increase reach. The Gripen E also received new external tanks with a capacity of 450 gallons of fuel each, in contrast to the 300 gallon tanks used on the Gripen C. This means that the Gripen E's two 450 gallon external tanks carry the same fuel as three tanks than 300 gallons of the Gripen C but generate less drag and occupy fewer weapon stations. Another factor is that the Gripen E engine is more modern and efficient than the Gripen C engine, which also contributed to the increase in autonomy. These changes ensured very good range for the Gripen E. According to Saab, in a combat air patrol configuration with four Meteor missiles and two Iris T missiles, plus an external ventral tank, the Gripen E has a range of 1,300 km with another 30 minutes at the station. This means that, without aerial refueling, it can fly in this configuration to a point 1,300 km away, remain on aerial patrol for 30 minutes, and return to base. For ground attack missions, although the exact configuration is not disclosed, Saab quotes a combat radius of 1,500 km. In this case, an extra external tank is probably taken to compensate for the greater fuel consumption caused by transporting heavy bombs. The range in ground attack missions is greater because they only count the round trip, while patrol missions include the round trip and the time spent patrolling the location. Based on these data, departing from the Uppsala base in Sweden on a combat air patrol mission, the Gripen E could cover all of Finland, Estonia, Lithuania, Denmark, Belarus, Poland, Norway, and the Czech Republic. It would also cover almost all of Germany, Holland and Slovakia, part of England, and could reach Kiev and Moscow. In a ground attack mission starting from the same base, in addition to the countries already mentioned, Gripen E could reach Hungary, Romania and Moldova, and could go deeper into Russian or Ukrainian territory. In the case of Brazil, Another Swedish fighter operator, a Gripen E departing from the Manaus Air Base on a combat air patrol mission could cover practically the entire Amazon region, the entire territory of French Guiana, Suriname and Guyana, in addition to practically half of Venezuela and part of Colombia, Bolivia and Peru. In a ground attack mission, starting from the same base, Gripen E could reach even deeper into the territories of Venezuela, Colombia, Bolivia and Peru. Starting from bases closer to Brazilian borders, Gripen E could reach the capital of practically any country in South America without needing aerial refueling. Recently, the Gripen E was chosen by the Royal Thai Air Force, which already operates the Gripen C. Departing from Surat Thani Air Base on a combat air patrol mission, the Gripen E could cover all of Thailand, Singapore and Cambodia. It would cover almost all of Laos, much of Vietnam and Myanmar, and parts of Indonesia and Malaysia. In a ground attack mission starting from the same base, 
he could reach even deeper into the territories of these countries and even reach a part of southern China. This is, without a doubt, a great range for a light fighter, even more so considering that these numbers are for missions without aerial refueling. With aerial refueling it would be possible to further extend this range. There is, however, another way to extend the Gripen E's range without needing aerial refueling. We have already discussed here on the channel, in the video that will be on the final screen, the Gripen's great ability to operate deployed with minimal structure, and one of the benefits of this capability is the possibility of creating refueling points on land with great ease. This way, Gripen E can take off from their air base, land on a highway hundreds of kilometers ahead, refuel, and take off again to attack a distant target. This allows the range to be greatly increased in offensive missions, even if aerial refueling aircraft are not available. Saab managed to solve the main shortcoming of previous versions of the Gripen. Carrying more internal fuel, more external fuel, and having a more efficient engine, the Gripen E can rival and even surpass in range some larger aircraft which, although they carry more fuel than the Gripen, are also heavier, generate more drag, and consume more. Thank you for watching the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and see you next time.